past few days, we have been working on value. Value is important in a lot of different types of artwork, specifically in still lifes. Think about what is a still life? Have you ever heard that word before? If you have, what does it mean to create a still life? A still life is a work of art depicting mostly inanimate subject matter or objects. Common objects that are found in still lifes are food, flowers, plants, rocks, shells, drinking glasses, plates, books, vases, jewelry, coins, etc. Okay, so essentially random household objects and things that we see every day are usually in still lifes. Still lifes were developed in the 16th century. And essentially, they allowed the artist to experiment um, and have the freedom to experiment with the arrangement of elements and with the composition of the objects in a painting or a drawing. So essentially, when we are creating a still life uh, for our next project, we are going to have the freedom to kind of experiment with how we place certain objects um, in front of us and how we can portray them onto our paper. Some famous still life artists that I want you to take a look at are the following three, Paul Cezanne, Vincent van Gogh, and Claude Monet. As you can see here, these three artists really enjoyed painting or drawing uh, plants and food objects, um, things like that. They were really interested at, in how to portray still lifes um, in an interesting way and show a lot of lights and darks um, within their still lifes. They also chose, as I said, very basic random objects to incorporate in their still lifes. What we're going to be doing today is we are going to be creating our own still life that has a few objects in it, but it's also going to have some value, meaning lights and darks, and it also will have a point of emphasis, which we will talk about. So a point of color and kind of some, some extra, a little pop of color in, in there. So as stated before, the element of art we're going to be focusing on is value. Value refers to how light or dark an object or an area is. A drawing is said to be a value drawing when it is in black and white. Some things to remember. We talked about how to create value in a variety of different ways. But I want you to remember also that we are creating value now in order to create and show the form of an object. OK, so just remember that a full range of value creates a more dramatic artwork. If you take a look at this uh, piece of or this picture on your screen, you can see that there is value because there's lights and darks. But they're specifically showing you how certain objects or shapes of objects or objects that have form can create different types of value effects. So if we take a look here. On the bottom, you'll see that there are three different colored um, words. There's like almost like a tealish word, a darker blue, and then a lighter blue word. Okay, so let's look at them really quick. In order to show form or look like that our objects are taking up space, we are going to do a few quick techniques to in incorporate lights and darks to show that form. OK, so when you're looking at the tealish color arrows on the picture, you can see that they are pointing to a curved area of the the shape or the form. OK, so when you see a curved area, that means there is going to be a very, a very nice, easygoing blending change, meaning that it's not going to be very, it's not going to be like a sharp line of light and dark. It's going to be like a nice ombre almost effect of going from light to dark to light again. And it's supposed to be a very smooth transition. When there is a gap, that is the dark blue within your artwork, meaning that there's almost like two separate sections, you are then going to be creating lights and darks instantaneously. So there's not going to be a very gradient blending change. It's just going to either be white and then the next part of it is going to be dark. Okay, so you'll you'll show um, that through your values. And then um, the lightest blue, um, which is on the bottom, it says bounce light. Um, bounce light makes your life really easy because essentially that's where your highlights are and it's just white, essentially. Um, so you want to make sure that you show that bounced light or those highlights um, by just creating a little bit of lightness and leaving your paper almost white um, completely to show where those highlights are. So the principle of design that we're going to be focusing on is emphasis. 
And emphasis is when an object or an area within the artwork draws the attention of the viewer and becomes the focal point of the artwork. So if you take a look at this still life, you can see that the artist created emphasis on the apple that's at the top of his composition. It creates a center of interest or a focal point. Remember that when we create emphasis, we do not have to put it right directly in the middle of our artwork. We can put it off to the left-hand side or the right-hand side. It can be towards the bottom. It can be towards the top, or it can be in the middle. So you want to start thinking about when we are creating your, when you are creating your still life, you're going to start thinking about, okay, what kind of object can I put emphasis on within my artwork so that the art, the viewer looks at that part of the artwork first. Some artists that use emphasis are listed below. As you can see all the way to the left, that is Magritte's artwork. He used to create these really abstract and bizarre surrealist paintings that um, showed emphasis. Um, the middle artist is uh, Andy Goldsworthy and he would create emphasis um, with his land art and essentially have the viewer draw their eyes right into the center of his artwork and then kind of move their eye around the paint or the, the picture. And then Georgia O'Keeffe is all the way on the right. And she used to create emphasis in her artwork as well, looking directly in the middle. And then your eye will eventually go around the entire piece. So for our still life today, you're going to need a few materials. Remember, you can always come and pick them up at the school at the front security desk. Some materials you're going to need are a charcoal pencil, a tortillion or a blending stick, um, a kneaded eraser, and a regular eraser. These are things you can also purchase or you may have even at your house. Um, you can purchase, purchase them at Michael's, um, online, things like that. So what you're going to do first is you need to set up your still life. OK, so let's go over the six essentials of a still life setup. You get to choose what your still life looks like. OK, you at least need five objects in your still life and then you're going to be snapping a picture before you start creating your still life. You need to think about a few things, though. Plan your composition around a focal point, just like we talked about. This object should dominate your image in some way, whether it's through color, shape, size, texture, etc. And you can put that anywhere, as I said, on the top, near the bottom, things like that. Place your focal point so that it is positioned on one or two intersections of the rule of thirds lines. Essentially, place your focal point either at the top or either at the bottom or either in the center. It doesn't matter. Remember, it could be um, towards the left-hand side. It could be towards the right-hand side. It really doesn't matter where you put your focal point, but you get to choose what that focal point will be. Try to think of the negative space or the space that's not your objects as part of the design as well. Be sure to have some overlapping objects to help your drawing have some depth. So make sure that you put some objects either in front or behind other objects so that they show that, that they're overlapping. Don't leave large open spaces, essentially, especially on the edges, because that will also make your, your still life kind of look um, just like it's a small portion, whereas you should kind of fill up a majority of the space. So as I said before, take five objects. It could be any type of objects that you want at your house or um, in your room. You can use um, plates. You can use things from the kitchen. You can use things from the bathroom. You can use things from your room. Set up a still life and set them up any way that you want. Make sure that you're in a well-lit area and then snap a picture on your phone or your computer. You are going to need this because we are going to be working on this part of our project for quite a long time. So you are going to need this picture because you're not going to remember exactly how you set up your artwork. Remember, when you're taking your picture as well, you want to make sure that there is good lighting so that you know where the highlights are, where the shadows are, and things like that. Some still life tips for drawing, okay? Number one, when you are looking at your subject or your picture that you have took, you need to make sure that you visually measure your still life objects. What do I mean by that? Essentially, you should look at your objects and say to yourself, okay, if I have an orange and a watermelon in my still life, obviously the orange is going to be portrayed a, a lot smaller than the watermelon because watermelons are much larger than oranges. So I definitely want to make sure that I measure and kind of understand exactly where the orange is compared to the size of the watermelon. 
Another thing to remember is to observe the size of the object and the sizes of its individual components as they relate to the whole. As I said, this kind of goes along with the first one. So remember, look at all the objects as you are drawing every single object and compare them in size to the other objects so that they are proportionate and they feel like they fit. Number three, observe the locations of the object and the locations of its individual components as they relate to the whole. So where are your objects in your still life? Are they towards the left? Are they towards the right? Remember, try to place them as best you can on your paper as you're looking at your reference picture or the still life that you created. Number four, compare the locations and the sizes of each object as they relate to the objects around it if drawing multiple items. So as I said, same thing that goes with number one, two, and three. Make sure that you look at the sizes of all the objects and where they are positioned in your composition. Number five, start by lightly sketching the basic shapes of each object. Consider drawing the largest basic shape first. This is very easy. Just look at the basic shapes. Do not add details until after you get at least the basic shapes down. After drawing the basic shapes and ensuring that um, and ensuring that they resemble what you observed, begin to add the details. So let's take a look at how Miss Parlow goes about creating her um, still life. So step one, obviously after you have set up your picture and taken, or set up your still life and you've taken a picture with at least five objects, you can have more, doesn't matter, okay? Begin to sketch out the basic shapes. Check for any inaccuracies and make necessary, uh, any necessary adjustments after you create your basic sketch. Number two, begin to add details. So add details of your still life objects, refine your details to your sketch to make it look um, like, you know, like how you want it to look, okay? So as you can see here, I added some details of the strawberry and the apple. Um, I also added details within the grapefruit. So really think about those quick details and refine them. Number three, you are then going to add value um, and start to shade and blend. Observe the source of light. So where is your light coming from? And incorporate appropriate shades of gray and darks and lights into the still life composition and check for any other needed adjustments. Remember, you can take a tortillion or, like, or a blending stick or a piece of uh, paper towel and rub it over the charcoal on the composition to blend the shades of gray. Okay, so you should start thinking about where are the shadows in my piece? Where are the highlights in my piece? How can I show form by blending and making darks and lights? All right. Think about the shadows, too, that your still life or that your objects are portraying onto the the um, either the ground or the table that you place your objects on. Think about where the light's coming from. That's why it is so important when you took your picture in the beginning of this project of your still life, you needed to make sure that you had a good light source, meaning that your light was on, you were outside, you were near a window, because you want to see exactly where the lights and the darks are within your piece. Let's take a look at how Miss Parlow adds value with charcoal on her quick video. All right, so as you can see, I started creating value within my still life. I am currently looking at a two grapefruit or a grapefruit cut in half, an apple, and two strawberries. Okay, so I'm almost done with all of my value, but I wanted to show you just a little inside scoop on how I started creating um, some of these lights and darks areas. Um, so what you need in order to create value is we're using a charcoal pencil. Um, remember, you can pick them up at the front office or you can go and purchase your own. I also want to apologize for my dirty hands because I was obviously working on this and um, when we use charcoal sometimes um, it is a little bit messy. Um, another thing you're going to need is you're going to need a kneaded eraser. Okay, these are really good for um, picking up any graphite or any charcoal that we um, do not need. It's also extremely fun to play with. I also have a regular eraser too, just in case if I really need to get more lights. And I have a tortillion, um, I like to call it my blendy stick. Um, essentially, this helps me blend to make sure that I am um, blending everything uh, without using my fingers, which I kind of did. All right. So what I'm going to finish right now is I definitely want to finish this um, open part of my uh, grapefruit. Okay, so some things I need to think about. I need to think about where the light is coming from um, and where my lights and darks are. Okay, so obviously with this um, 
artwork, you can see that my light is coming from over here to the left uh, hand side um, because this part of my apple is obviously lightest. Same with my uh, grapefruit over here. Um, and then I have a lot of darks over on this side because that's where the shadows are. So I'm just going to start to create um, some darks and lights in here. Um, because the light is really shining brightly on top of this part of the grapefruit, um, it is important that I keep everything pretty light. Um, and so I'm not going to be adding too much value. I definitely want to add some value into the middle here because this is going to show like this dark, deep um, part of the uh, middle of the grapefruit. So in order to start adding value, what I like to do is I just take my charcoal um, pencil and I think about, as I said, where are my darks and lights, okay? I also always use a piece of paper to try to cover any sort of um, places uh, that I've already done because I don't want this to happen um, and then smudge all my, my, um, my, my drawing that I've already completed. So what I'm going to do is I'm just taking my charcoal pencil and I'm going to start to lightly go around um, this circle. The circle is going to be dark um, down on the top here, but then it's going to get lighter. So I usually start with a basic, very light outline. Remember, the lighter that you press down, obviously the lighter your um, marks are going to be. The more you press down, the obviously more dark they're going to be. Um, and I usually like to go in one direction. So rather than scribbling, I'm just following this basic shape of my um, mini oval that I'm, I'm starting to add value to. So as you can see, I'm gonna start to build down or kind of decrease the value. So I'm not going to be doing as much layering as I did on the bottom. Um, and I, I, this is a slow process. So remember, take your time, like don't rush this, okay? Um, if you do make a mistake, that's why we have needed erasers and things like that. So after I'm done with the overall value of it, um, I'm just going to come in and take my blendy stick and I'm going to start to blend some of those darks in. Okay. Um, I definitely want to blend lightly by the lights because I don't want to blend too much. Right. Um, and I definitely want to show some definition here. So um, I'm going to leave that like that. If I needed to, I can always take my kneaded eraser and even kind of blend a little bit as well. Um, dotting is a good technique to use um, instead of like smudging. So just do that. I just want to make sure I cover this area. So once again, coming in with my little tortillion to add some more definition. Okay, and that's looking pretty good to me. As you can see, I've created value because I started with the dark and I just started layering that up. And as I was able to kind of come around these edges, I just started lightening up my uh, my pressure on my charcoal marker or charcoal, charcoal pencil and um, made sure that I wasn't blending too much in there. All right, um, I'm gonna do one more part with you just so that you are aware of how to add value. Um, I definitely wanna add a little bit of value along these edges. And then I'm probably gonna add just a little bit of value within these here, but I'm just gonna show you the edges, okay? So what I'm doing is once again, lightly going with my charcoal uh, pencil, and I'm just going to lightly start to kind of define these edges as best I can. And I know that there is some value in here, some darkness, because um, the top of the grapefruit um, is obviously these lines. And then this is like the, the fleshy, fleshy part, the part that, um, you know, that's where all the good stuff is to eat. So I'm just going to add a quick little, almost like a little drop shadow in there. Um, because the edges are pretty profound right here, I am going to make it a little bit darker just to show that. And then I'm gonna take my, my, my tortillion or my blendy stick, whatever you like to call it, and I'm just going to start to blend some of this together. As I said, I'm not blending too much here because I am, um, this is probably gonna be the one of the lightest parts because the light is completely looking at this and completely reflecting off of this. Um, so if I feel like anything's too dark, just come in and start to dab 
some of those lights away, okay? All right, so um, these are just some quick tips on um, adding value and blending. Um, remember, always start off light, and then um, you can always apply more, you know, dark or um, more graphite to your drawing. Um, it's important to really make sure that you do that because if you start going crazy with the with the darks, it's going to become a really, really dark piece. Okay, so step four, after we have created value within our still life, we are then going to cut away one shape that will be drawn on color paper. So that's going to be our object with emphasis. So unfortunately, I didn't say this before, but I'm saying it now. When you are creating value within your objects of your still life, make sure that you leave one of your objects completely blank. You do not have to add value to that object because we're actually going to be cutting away one of our objects um, in our still life in order to create emphasis. So let's watch how um, Miss Parlo does that. Remember, if you don't have an X-Acto blade at home, you can always use a scissor. Okay, so what we're going to do now, because you should have completed value within a majority of your still life, um, we are going to pick one object within our still life to leave um, blank for right now because we are going to be adding a pop of color in here in a fun, interesting way. Um, before we add our pop of color, though, I want to just go over a few rules with our um, X-Acto knife or a razor blade, okay? Um, obviously, razor blades are very sharp. Um, if you don't have one of these at home, you can always use a scissor. It's really up to you what you feel comfortable with. Um, but I do want to just share um, a little bit about some safety measures that you should be taking when using a razor blade. Okay. One, you should always get permission to use a razor blade, either from your teacher or your parents. Um, also, you never want to play with these tools. They are very, very sharp. Um, so make sure that you always keep um, the blade side facing down. Okay. You never want to point it at anyone or anything like that. Um, these blades that I have in my classroom cannot leave the classroom. They are considered a weapon if they do leave my room. So please make sure you respect that. Um, check to make sure that the blade is tight and secure. So as you can see here, um, there is a spot where you can actually start to twist this off and the blade will come out. So it is important to make sure that your, your, um, this part right here is really twisted tightly and the blade can't move um, because you want to make sure that it is nice and secure while you are about to cut. Um, another thing that you should always remember is that if you are not using your blade or you're walking around with your blade, you should always keep it capped, okay? There is a cap here on it and it's important to keep that on just so that um, no one gets hurt accidentally. Another thing to remember, um, you always should protect your table. So as you can see, I have this board here. You can use any sort of um, like rubber mat. Um, you know, just make sure that you protect the, t the table that you're working on because you could potentially um, cut the table and we definitely don't want, want that happening. Um, always make sure that you are cutting away from you um, and you're holding it like a pencil, okay? So anytime we are cutting, you don't want to cut towards you. My body is right here, okay? Um, I don't want to cut towards me because if I do and I accidentally slip, I could really hurt myself and or someone else. Um, and you want to hold it like a pencil, okay? Don't hold it like this. This is not a secure way to hold a um, X-Acto knife, so make sure that you're holding it like a pencil. So what you should have done, as I said, you should have created value with a majority of the items in your still life. You are to choose one item in your still life to leave blank and not add uh, darks and lights to as of right now. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your X-Acto knife. Now I'm going to kind of twist this around so that I have it at a better angle. And I'm making sure that I know exactly where I'm starting to cut this out. So I'm going to cut out this entire strawberry. So once again, I'm just holding the piece of paper and I'm also just pulling away from me and I'm going to go really slow and controlled because if I mess up here, um, I'm, I'm obviously going to have a, um, a problem with my overall look of my artwork. So I'm going slow. Okay. 
I turn my paper around a lot of the time. I remember I'm always making sure that I am cutting away from me. So continue to do this. Oops. Oops, that's a little tight spot, so I might I might have to use a scissor for that. Okay, so I'm just following my lines as best as I can. If you make a tiny mistake, it's not a big deal. You just want to make sure that you do go nice and slow, though, especially when you're using this knife. All right, and then one more line here. All right, so after I'm done cutting that out, I should be able to just pop it right out, okay, nice and slowly. I may have to go over a few parts, um, but our next video will show you exactly how to add value to this blank spot that you will currently have after you pop out your piece that you are you chose to leave blank all right so as i said this is popping out i'm going to slowly pop this out off the video but i'm looking forward to seeing um your ideas for this project okay so after you've cut your item out that you have chosen as your object of emphasis, you are then going to add details onto a colored paper and attach this to your still life. So what you will do is you will take a piece of colored paper. It doesn't matter what color it is. Think about what your, the col color of your object it needs to be. So obviously for mine, this is just a picture, but for mine, I chose um, a red piece of paper because I'm making a strawberry. Um, so you are going to align the colored paper drawing to fit and fill the cutout shape on the back of your artwork. Um, tape the colored paper to the back of your drawing and then what you will do is you will begin adding color and value to your emphasized object with colored pencils. Let's watch how I add color and value with colored pencils onto my object of emphasis on my colored paper. Okay, so you cut out your shape or your object that you were planning on having color on um, and then what I asked you to do was just tape a piece of the colored paper onto the back of your sheet um, so that you can start to draw um, your colored object uh, on your colored paper. Um, so as you can see, I'm doing a strawberry here and two things I wanted to show you. One, obviously a strawberry is red, so I picked red paper, but obviously the red part of my um, strawberry is going to be red, whereas the green leafy part is going to be that green part. So what I've start, started doing is I started adding value and green color on top of my red uh, just to add that color. So I want to show you a few questions quick tricks on when you're adding color onto your colored paper. Um, so you're going to be using colored pencils for this part of the project. We use charcoal for the first part with all of our shading. And now it's time to use colored pencils on the only color part that you are working on a piece of construction paper. Okay, so um, what you will need for this part of the project is you're going to need colored pencils. Think about the colors that you obviously want on your um, piece of paper and on your uh, fruit or your object that is colorful. Um, I needed greens for the leaf and I also needed reds um, for the strawberry. But what I also needed is black and white. And black and white are really important because white helps us blend and black helps us define more shadows and, and some darks, okay? So I'm just going to give you a quick um, little intro or a quick little demo on how to add um, certain colors and I'm going to do it in my leaves and I'll do a little bit on my strawberry as well. So as I'm working on my leaves, I'm looking and I'm remembering where are the darks in my leaves and where are the lights, right? So um, I'm finishing up or I'm going to start this leaf right now. I just started, all I did right now is I just outlined the basic shape of this leaf, okay? Um, and then what I like to do is I like to put down a dark color um, that I will be using 
uh, for the leaves. And I'm just doing it very lightly. I'm not going crazy with pressure. Um, I just want to make sure that it, uh, it covers some of my red paper. Obviously, if I put more pressure down, you could see that I'll cover more of my red paper, but just for now, I'm just doing a light little layer over my uh, green. Now I'm gonna take another green because I'm using a multitude of different greens here, and I'm going to start to apply more pressure to mix these two greens together so it looks more like the rest of the leaves that I have already started with. Um, remember, as you know, with charcoal, the more pressure you put down with these colored pencils, um, the darker your color will be and the more um, uh, invisible your background color will be. Uh, so just make sure that you remember that. Um, it is important to add whites uh, or lights and darks to this. So what I am going to do is I know that there's going to be a little drop shadow underneath my um, leaf right here. So all I'm doing is I'm just coming in and lightly putting that drop shadow. I even might put a little bit of a shadow right here just to be, to get a little bit more definition. I'll also make the veins of my leaves a little darker. Um, this is part of my other leaf. So I'm just going to be adding darkness underneath there a little bit. And remember, this real this part is really all about like how much pressure you add to your drawing and how much color you want to apply. So after I've done that, I like to take my white and I always save my white for the end um, because it's such a great blending tool. You don't realize um, with the white to, and it really brightens up some aspects of your colors. Um, so I'm just coming back in here. Now I noticed this is a little bit darker than over here, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more darkness, some shadows, okay. All right, so that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna finish um, my other leaf later. Let's go to my strawberry. So now I'm taking this red paper that I have and I need to add some definition onto my red strawberry, obviously. Um, so what I'm going to do, same thing that I just did with the leaves, I'm going to start with like a darker red. Um, obviously, there's going to be a big shadow over here because the light is coming from this way. So the shadow is going to come kind of like a little bit curved. All right. So I'm going to start with um, this darker red that I have here. Um, this is the darkest red that I have. And what I'm doing, I'm just gonna turn my paper. Remember, I'm always using a piece of paper just to make sure I don't get graphite all over the place or charcoal all over the place. And I'm just gonna start to apply this color in a diagonal motion so that I can get some color coverage there and also show some shadows. Okay, so I'm just kind of going over. Um, it's kind of tough to see right now because of the 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 um, glare of my lights. Um, but essentially, what I'm doing is I'm just adding some value here, and for value, all I'm doing is just adding a darker red tone, so that I. Um, can show that there is some darks over on this side of my strawberry. Remember, all about pressure, right? So if I add less pressure, obviously I will get more, um, I will get a lot lighter of a, a shade. Okay, now I'm coming in with some black and I'm just lightly adding a little bit of black on this side over here to just add, as I said, some more dimension and a little bit more emphasis on the fact that this is a shadow area. Okay, I'm gonna come up here, add a lot of black right here because if I think about my, um, my leaves, it's definitely gonna show a little bit more of a shadow here than anywhere else. Okay. All right. Um, remember pressure 
this is the most important part of this project is the amount of pressure that we put on our paper. Okay, so after I've done that, um, it's going to be time to add um, a little bit more dimension to this. So I'm just gonna come in with like another color red, which is really hard to see and that's okay. Um, actually, let's try another color. I might not even have to really add much of a red, to be honest, on this side because this side is so dark already, which it works for me. Um, but I like to add a little bit more dimension as much as I can when I'm using colored pencils. All right, I'm going to come and take this red one more time. And just kind of bring this up like this. I'm going to go a little bit more darker in here. And I am going to add just a little bit of definition over on this side just to show, you know, this is the edge of the strawberry. And there might be some shading. All right, my strawberry obviously needs some seeds. So what I'm just going to do with my black color pencil and start to add those seeds, big and small, diagonal, all over just to get the, the feel that this is the strawberry. Um, if I wanted to, which I think I'm going to do, I'm actually going to add some whites um, with that white colored pencil over here. Um, just to show a little bit more of the lights. So I'll just come in and kind of just go over that. Can't really see it as well as I would love you to, but I am just doing some quick highlights just to show some definition. And up here, I'll do some more highlights, more than over here. Okay. All right. So that was just a quick, um, just a quick way for you to add some definition into color over here. Um, remember. The white is a really, really important um, tool to use for this part of the project. Um, and the, the black uh, colored pencil is also important. So just make sure you have those two on hand while you are doing your color part of your project.